This video is sponsored by AVG. There are five things that make a good cloud storage service. And so in this video, I'm gonna run you through what those five are and how each of these cloud storage providers stack up. They're some of the most popular names you've probably heard of, as well as some of the most popular alternatives. There have been a few changes recently, so this video should provide you with an up-to-date guide if you're looking for somewhere that is best to store your data. Now, links will be down below this video for each of them. Some of them have some pretty incredible discounts on them, which we'll talk about more in a moment. So let's start off with something that everybody starts with, and that is pricing. So from cheapest to most expensive, and for those that you do pay monthly, I'm gonna give you the full year's cost just so we can compare here. And I'm gonna throw them up on the screen so we can see for yourself, but I just wanna point out some differences here. Now, firstly, most of the prices there are for two terabytes of storage. However, iDrive gives you five terabytes, and they also have a special first year offer at just $7.95 for the whole year, which you can get using the link down below this video. But after that first year, it then increases to the still the lowest price of all the others. But I just wanted to show that comparison without the discounted pricing for now. Microsoft OneDrive, the most they offer is just one terabyte of data. pCloud has a 10% discount, which I'll link again down below. But other than that, purely based on pricing, iDrive absolutely smashes it out of the park there. So if you are purely looking at pricing, then iDrive kind of wins at this stage. Sync also provides a very affordable service in comparison with its other features, which we'll talk about in a moment. And the big players like Google, Apple, Dropbox, they all sit at the very top of that price point. Now, if you do have a lot of data and perhaps you're after unlimited storage, then you don't have any options as a consumer. But if you upgrade to some of the business tiers, unlimited storage does actually become an option. Again, I'm gonna put these prices up on the screen now, but still the pricing isn't that bad. 30 bucks a month at best and 100 bucks a month at worst for completely unlimited storage, which if you hold a, you know, a lot of data, still isn't that bad. But whilst pricing is one thing that most people focus in on first, there are some key differences that you need to be aware of when choosing a service. So in terms of features, all of these services will work on pretty much every device. You've got Apple, Windows, iPhone, and Android, with one exception, of course, with iCloud. Whilst you can use it on Windows and Android devices, I'd only really recommend iCloud if you're an Apple user with, you know, an iPhone, a Mac, and, and or an iPad, just because you get that full Apple experience by doing so. It's kind of like running Windows on a Mac. It does kind of work, but it's just, it's just not designed to do that. So if you do have a mixture of devices, one of the other services may be better suited. Now, again, they all have fairly similar features and similar desktop functions here. You can share files and folders. Some of them even look similar, but pretty much all of these once installed will just show themselves as an extra folder on your computer, which you can use to move things in and out just like you know any other folder does. There is one specific feature that I wanted to call out here though, which to most people can make a significant difference to how they use the service. And that's a feature called online files. Now online files means you can still access all of your files and folders directly from your computer's desktop. You don't actually download the file until you either open the file or you choose to download it, typically by like right clicking the file and choosing to download. Load. Now, most of the ones I've tested so far have this feature. iDrive doesn't have that feature. Sync does have the feature, but you have to download the Sync Cloud Files beta client, which isn't really advertised anywhere and has been in beta for pretty much a year, I think. But that does work well once you actually get there. So what I want to do here is to highlight some limitations here, which may take you one step closer again to deciding which one is the best for you. Now, the first limitation is around the maximum file sizes. Again, I'm going to show them on the screen here from smallest to largest, but those sizes will limit the size of individual files that you can upload. Now, reading through these limitations for most people, the only one you might want to be careful with here is iDrive and maybe iCloud being at 50 gig. But with that said, I did upload some larger files to iDrive and iCloud and I didn't have any issues. So it looks only to be a recommended limit rather than a hard stop. Now I know that 10 gig files are kind of few and far between unless you like, know that you're creating those large types of files. For example, some of the video files I upload from my editor can be up to 100 gig in size. But for most people, those limits aren't going to cause you a problem at all. A quick shout out once again to AVG for sponsoring this video. AVG offers protection for Macs and PCs across business and personal computers. I actually remember using AVG internet security way back in the 90s on my dad's computer. So they have decades of experience with a product that's always been excellent at blocking bad things from getting onto your machine. To get up to 60% off for the first year, click on the link down below and check out their multi award winning security and features such as enhanced anti ransomware and additional protection on accessing your webcam to a firewall that blocks anything suspicious. And with their 4.3 star rating on Trustpilot, you can be sure that you're in safe hands. So thank you once again to AVG for sponsoring this video and for supporting a small creator such as myself. Now the next potential limitation is how fast each of these services are in terms of uploads and download speeds. So I'm gonna throw the results up on the screen once again, rather than wasting your time explaining each one. But all of these tests were done when uploading a 10 gig file to each service and then downloading that 10 gig file back again. And I did this multiple times and at different 
times of the day to check if it was consistent. Now, most of them are pretty close. Some of them, really not. <laughs> Sync.com, shockingly slow. iDrive also, not great, but then at seven bucks for the year, I kind of expect that. OneDrive was also pretty slow to download compared to the others. Dropbox was actually the fastest to download, and then Google Drive was the fastest to upload for me. Number three, or maybe four are we on now, on the five things every good cloud service needs is to protect your data. This is typically by what they call data retention, which is how long they'll store old copies of your data. Sometimes it's how many versions of a file they'll store. Now what none of these services do for you is back up your data. They do replicate your data to like multiple locations. So there's no issues of losing your data if one of their locations gets hit by like a fault or a natural disaster. But generally speaking, it's always best to use a different service to actually back up your data because what's the point of say Microsoft backing up your data and then Microsoft suffers an outage? Or if you delete something, for example, and you don't realize it until a few months later, it's too late to recover it. But data retention is something that some of these cloud services do offer, which means you have the ability to roll back and recover data to a certain point. Now, I would argue here that sync.com actually has the best standard protection at 180 days, whereas you need to upgrade to Dropbox Pros or business level to get that same protection, and of course, at a higher cost. pCloud also offers the option to upgrade to one year of retention, which is actually pretty good, but does then make it very expensive in comparison to the others. So Sync is now one of the cheapest and has some of the best retention, but some of the slowest speeds. Damn, it's really not making my job here that easy. But that isn't all because the next thing you should be concerned about is the security of your data. Normally it's the last thing people worry about, but I think it is still very important to cover in one of these videos. Now, firstly, the good news here is that all of the services support two-factor authentication as a bit of a standard, but I wanna highlight a few here. So Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, and as of January, 2023, Apple's own iCloud all support the use of one of the these Yubi keys, which is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best ways to protect your account from being hacked. So without having this physical key, for example, you can't access your data. So it's very, very difficult for someone to get into your account without your key. Now, I'm going to leave a link down below to buy these because not many people seem to know about them still. But secondly is a phrase known as zero knowledge encryption. Now, this means that even if someone did get into your account and find your data, they couldn't access it or do anything with it because they don't have the decryption keys. Now, unfortunately, the likes of Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, and until recently, Apple, they aren't zero knowledge. Now, the companies themselves hold the keys to your data. So if someone does get in, they can browse your data and still take what they want. So if you want to secure your data, you want to use a zero knowledge service. Now, of the list we're looking at, that means iDrive, Sync, and Apple, actually, surprisingly. But with Apple, it's not very obvious. You actually have to go into the settings menu and enable it on one device for it to kind of roll it out to all your devices. But I'll link to a video from a friend of mine, Josh from All Things Secured. I'll pop it up here on how to do that. Now, pCloud is also zero knowledge, but you do have to pay for their add-on, which is called pCloud Crypto, which is an awfully named product. It sounds like something to do with Bitcoin when it's completely not. And that is also a $50 a year add-on, making it the most expensive option of all of the options we're looking at now. Now, the last thing I think is important when it comes to security is to see if any breaches have recently happened. And so as far as major breaches go, only Dropbox has had a recent one in November of 2022, where names and addresses for employees, customers, leads, and vendors were potentially stolen, but no customer data was compromised. But honestly, with that said, even though none of the other services had any major breaches, we all know that accounts get hacked like daily. There was the massive iCloud leak of you know celebrity photos a few years ago, a seemingly endless list of people who get their Google and Microsoft accounts compromised. But this doesn't typically happen because the service itself has a poor implementation of security. It actually comes down to how we as users of those services poorly implement our own security. So if you are honestly concerned about the security of your own data, data, i.e. not wanting anyone else to get their hands on it, then I would recommend looking for one of these zero knowledge encryption services. So after taking all of this information into account, where would I place my recommendations? Well, iDrive is cheap and secure, but slow. But at seven bucks for like the first year, you can't really complain there. Now, sync.com feels like it's the best all rounder. It just sucks for me that it's so slow to upload and download in my most recent tests. But I would recommend you give it a try first. Like maybe you can find your speed results are a lot different to mine. And you can always just ask for a refund if it you know, doesn't work well for you either. Otherwise, you can't actually go wrong with sticking within your own ecosystem. So Apple, Microsoft, or Google, if you're already with them, given that you get all the extras like Microsoft desktop apps or the Google Docs, just make sure that you secure your accounts properly with the YubiKey. Now, the good news is that I wouldn't say any of these services are bad services. It's not like my password manager review where I found some pretty significant issues with some of them. But until next time.